Hello human beings, Cacti Not Cactus here, and today we're going to be nitpicking. So, uh, we're going to be talking about the G-Force problem in Theme Park Tycoon 2. So, if you've been playing this game for a while and you like to build coasters, then you probably noticed the stats page, and you can tell that the G-Forces and, like, stats that they put on the ride aren't exactly accurate. Uh, so to demonstrate that, I built this little, um, death contraption here, uh, yeah, this video is just going to be kind of a critique of how the physics work in this game. So, this this is the highest G point on the ride. It's it's 3.7 Gs. So I want you to watch this go through this and how like insanely small this is. Like that would be crazy in real life, unreal. And now, uh, I'm going to stop that. And um, here's a clip of Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas going through an element that is almost at six Gs. Compare that to this. This little loop right here. I mean, this should be way more than 3.7, yet the game listed as 3.7 Gs. So already, that's kind of a red flag, that it's that small. Um, and then here, here's this airtime hill. So this is about 1.5 negative Gs. So let's watch this go through the airtime hill. It's, it, it goes through insanely fast. I put more boosters on it. Look at that. That was just insane. So now I'm going to be showing you a clip of El Toro at Six Flags Good Adventure, which reaches about the same negative Gs. And you can tell th this should be way more than around one, negative 1.5. Like, the way the hill is crested is extremely sharp and would probably be less than two negative Gs in real life. So that's already a problem. And then uh, now we're going to get into how the uh, speed works uh, in comparison to the height. Alright, so now we're in Insanity Park, aka my main park, and what you're seeing right now is fireworks. So this is my RMC coaster that I have at my park, and this thing is 137 feet tall, if I'm remembering correctly. So, and you can see the drop reaches the ground right here, yet somehow, this ride's max speed is 37 miles per hour. A measly 37 miles per hour. How- I, I- I just- I don't know how that's even possible. I can't even fathom how that would work. With such a- I mean, it's not the biggest coaster I ever built, but it's definitely of size, yet it barely reaches any good speed at all. So, here- here's it going down the drop right here. Even though this isn't the steepest drop, this thing really does not reach that fast of a speed compared to its height. Um... Meanwhile, let's take a look at Bizarro at Six Flags Great Adventure, a roller coaster at 143 feet tall, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, yet it reaches 62 miles per hour. So, in real life, a roller coaster with nearly the exact same height has double the speed, pretty much. Not exactly double, but pretty much. And, yeah, I really just made this video to address the insanely inconsistent G's in theme park compared to real life because I never seen anybody make a video about this before and it's honestly it's honestly kind of weird I hope they can fix it so you can see how your rides would actually be like in real life like if they would be too intense or whatever because really it takes a lot to realize like I mean you pretty much have to um eyeball it you know just to, to, to see if the ride's too intense or not other than that you know, you can't really rely on the, um, the actual stats that it provides you because they're just, like, completely ridiculous. Alright, well, that is my share of complaining for today. Uh, happy Friday, everyone, and remember, it's Cacti Not Cactuses. Stay prickly.